Mm. Oh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio. We back in business. I got my co-host, Water, man. Water, man. Water is the ultimate co-host, man. Whatever you got going, even if you're getting a BBL, you still need that water. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. Mm -hmm. We back in business. Uh, don't forget to drink your water, y'all. Drink your water. I can tell who I can tell who not drinking their water. Y'all be looking dusty. There's a dusty element to you when you're not drinking that water like you should, man. There's a little bit of dust. You might not, and I, I'm not meaning to say like dusty in your in your vocal cords or like you know your your outfit, but there's a there's something dusty going on. Whether it might be your eyeballs might be a little dusty, your mouth, you know what I'm saying? Gums a little dusty. Get that water in your life, man. Hydrate, hydrate. Especially if you smoke a lot, man. You better, you better be watering it up, washing it down. You better be washing it down. You got to wash down that smoke residue. I don't care if you smoke cigarettes, weed, hookahs, whatever. Wash down that smoke residue. You know what I'm saying? People can taste the smoke. All right? You don't want to be kissing somebody and you taste like smoke. Remember, in the immortal words of Forrest Gump, she tasted like cigarettes. Remember he said that? Remember he said that in Forrest Gump when he kissed that girl and he was like, she tasted like cigarettes. And that was just Forrest being real with himself. Real in the moment, he meant no malice, but it was just like, yo, she tasted like cigarettes. And you don't want to be tasting like cigarettes, blunts, joints, lounge. You don't want that taste. Make sure you're drinking your water, man. You're rinsing and you're washing and you're washing it down and you're cleansing. All right. I just wanted to say that. Shout out to my patron saints in here, man. They in the building as usual. Main email to Jesse, Tony Ant, Enigma, Aomi, Dan Hill, Passionate for God, Shabrina Osborne, Jason Anderson, Ryan, um, Dual, wait, Dual Say Mule, uh, Muse, my bad, uh, Heavy B, Jax Wild, Kristen R, Courtney Black, Chris Russell, uh, S. York Blue, Tanisha Turner, Kobe Maguire, Keisha Clark, Jamal B. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about you feel me. Y'all in here, Sharon McD. Lana is up in here. Shayla Butler's up in here. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Alice is in this thing. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Brittany D. Joshua Caldor. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Kador. My bad. Kador. I ain't got my glasses on, man. King Julius D, Stony Face Entertainment, Tim Scotty, you know what I'm talking about? You feel me? L. Adams, Latoya Henry up in here, man. Marquita Morris in this thing, you know what I'm saying? Dayo is up in here, man. Shout out to my patron saints. To you in the Instagram. These are the people that have gone the extra mile, man. We holding each other in the bed right now, man. If you on IG Live listening to this podcast, man, you just smashing me. You're not, you not dedicating. You're not giving me the quality time. You're not giving me the quality time, man. The Patreon is giving me the quality time, and I'm giving the quality time right back in return. I'm giving the quality dilk. I'm giving the quality dilk on top of the quality time, man. Is that everybody going to get the quality dilk? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my new patron saints, Kiana Scott, Swampy Nutsack, Dane Phil, Joy Williams, Danielle Rose, Trey Porter, uh, Moolah, 9MR, and uh, Dream Poet. I still want more of y'all to join up, man. See, see, a lot of y'all in the IG Live, you want to sit back and let other people join while you be like, yeah, the other people join, so I'm going to just hide in the crowd. Nah, man. 
Nah, man, click that link in my bio. Take the next step, man. Click the link in my bio. Click that Patreon tab and join up, man. Get in on it, man. Get the quality dilk. Get the quality dilk, yo. Um, so we all know the talk of the town is the, is the Drake and Kendrick dust up. We all know this. This is all anybody's ever been talking about all week long. This is what it is. This is where we are. This is this is this is all that matters to everybody right now. And you know, it's 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 crazy to see. I thought I I thought I would never see this. You know what I'm saying? At this level. But it's going down. It's going down. But I just, I want y'all to be fair. I know you like who you like, but please be fair in this beef and just, you know, give fair assessments. Give fair assessments, man. Don't don't just be blindly biased. That's my whole thing. Don't be blindly biased, y'all. I can hear it. I can see it and taste it and hear it all up in your tone. I know y'all being biased. So when you when you when you're that bias, you lose credibility in any debate, any argument, you lose credibility. And you never want to you never want to lose credibility, man. Credit scores are everything. You want your credit score to be high. You want your financial credit score to be high, and you want your personal credit score to be high. You want your social credit score to be high. You want your intellectual credit score to be high. So you lose credibility, your credit score goes down if you're blindly biased. Like when I'm biased, I let you know off top i let you know off top i'm being biased like whenever i'm talking about sports in chicago anything i'm gonna let you know off top i'm being biased chicago is gonna win the championship they're gonna win the super bowl i'm coming in biased first but i'm gonna admit to you that so therefore when it comes to anything chicago i'm a little irrational you know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm giving credit where credit is due in other teams, but when it comes to Chicago, I'm going to be like, yeah, but Chicago. But I admit to that. The Bulls are always winning the championship every season. That's my mindset. We're going to win it all this year. We're going all the way. That's how I come in. That's how I come in. That's that loyalty. But I also know a lot of times I'm delusional. I'm, I'm crazy biased. So I'll let you know off top before we get into an exchange. A little irrational, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? A little bit. You know what I'm talking about, you feel me? But at least I admit it, I'll let you know where I stand off the jump. So there, therefore, we can't we can't do an extensive back and forth. And then you realize, like, yo, you biased. I'll be like, yo, I told you that from the beginning. I told you that from the very beginning. You know what I'm talking about, you feel me? So Courtney Black asked me, do you think Drake actually has an 11-year-old daughter? I do not. I don't. Would it be an absolute shocker? Um, I'll be I'll be surprised, but it's it's like, come on, man. Anybody famous, any famous man, any famous man, I'm never surprised when they got extra kids dangling out there. I'm never surprised. A famous man they got they got access to mad women out here. You know you know it's gonna be some raw smash going on somewhere, and I just feel like, yeah, there's always the possibility that famous men got some loose kids out here. So if he de- if he does have an eleven year old, I'd be like, well, I mean, come on, come on, man, because even non famous men got loose kids running around, man. You ain't got to be famous to have loose kids running around, but when you are famous, you get more access to the raw vagina. And when you got sex on your table at any given moment, you're going to cave in, you're going to give it, especially a single dude. You know, Drake Drake been single for mad long. So when you just out here, man, you know what I'm saying? Coo- coochies is just at your disposal you gonna slip up you gonna fumble the ball that's why you gotta get a vasectomy man if you don't if you don't want no kids if you out here living that life you wilding out you just you being a swinging bachelor just get you a vasectomy man that way you ain't got to worry about this if that's if that's the life you're gonna be living 
And then when you find a special somebody, you can get it reversed, man. But get the snip snip. Speaking of the snip snip, they want me to cut off the IG live. They want me to cut off the IG live right now. They want me to snip snip y'all. They want me to vasectomy the IG live. They want me to cut off all the access. They want me to snip y'all like my nutsack right now. Because they don't want y'all in here getting the free podcast on the live. Since y'all don't want to join the Patreon, my patron saints don't want you in here. So I'm going to have to cut the feed off. But you you don't have to take this L. You don't have to take this L. Just join up. $5 a month? Come on, man. Ain't no streaming platform out there that you already a member of. They're not going to give you no personal shout out like I will. They're not going to give you no personal shout out. Netflix ain't going to say your name. Amazon Prime ain't going to say your name. Disney Plus ain't going to say your name. Hulu ain't going to say your name. They're not going to ask you how your family doing. They're not going to do none of this. They're not going to check in with you. They just want your money and they just want you to hush. That's it. I'm giving you that extra though. You know what I'm saying? I'm caring about you. Now, now, granted, if my Patreon was to get so large that I had hundreds of thousands of, of you know, patron saints, then, then, then it would probably be harder to give y'all personal shout outs like that. But right now, right now, you can get that personal touch, my hand on your thigh. I can say your name, but I'm not going to say your name. Because you ain't a patron saint. I don't know why that thumbs up keep popping up. But also, when I do a thumbs up, it show a thumbs up on the thing. Anyway, I'm about to cut y'all off. Join my Patreon right here, right now. Click the link in my bio. Go to the Patreon tab. That way you don't miss a beat. But right now, I'm cutting y'all off. All right. Boom. There. Y'all happy now? Dang, man. I, to- I keep telling y'all, man, I got to give them the free dose. I keep telling y'all I got to give them the free dose so they know, so they can get like invested. And then it's like, I'm snatching it down, man. Let me snatch it down. Let me snatch it down, y'all. Y'all never give me a chance to just, you got to entice them. You got to tease them. You got to let them know what they missing. Simone, Sharon, Ouch, Charlie, Sapphire, Lana, you got to let them know. Y'all being selfish, man. We, we, I'm trying to build this. I'm trying to build this, y'all. I'm trying to build this, this, uh, this podcast from the ground up, man. I'm trying to build this Patreon from the ground up, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me get in on that. Anyway, uh, let me do this ad real quick, and then we can begin. Um, so, life doesn't happen bi-weekly, y'all. Life does not happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earning. Earning is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Do y'all realize how beneficial that could be? Well, you ain't, you're not at the mercy of your paycheck date. Now, now, granted, the way I work now, I don't know when my checks is coming in. You know, I got some monthlies that I know, but a lot of stuff that I do, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I just got a check yesterday. I've been waiting on this check for mad long. I didn't know when it was coming in. So, you know, having having something like earning would have been super beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Again, you can get up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the earning app and verify your paycheck. Then... Access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. All right. So, you know, you got a special night out, a last minute gift, last minute car repair, unexpected uh, trip to the vet, upcoming rent, a uh, medical bill, any, any type of bill or like pop up situation where you need some money right then and there. Earning got you. Make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. And I posted about peace of mind yesterday. Peace of mind is my primary concern in this day and age. When you got that peace of mind, when you got peace, 
everything else just falls into place, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be getting money and still not be peaceful. You know what I'm saying? You can you could be getting money, your money right. But you in inner turmoil the whole time. And then your money don't even hit the same because you're not at peace. That peace of mind is everything. Download the Earning app today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in Verbal Cardio under podcast. When you sign up, it'll really help the show. Verbal Cardio under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Remember, they are not a bank. So I just want to make that clear again. I'm going to say it again. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. So remember that. Earning, man. Get in on this, man. Get your money right, man. Get that peace of mind going. Get that peace of mind going. All right. So yesterday... Yesterday, so a lot of dudes on, on social media in the Instagram comment section, for example, they they like to call me a simp or that I pander to the female base, to the woman base. And I'm just like, all right. So I posted on, on my Instagram. I was like, yo, for those of you that think I'm a simp or that I'm, I'm Panda Express out here, give me specific examples of where I was doing this. And so I'm digging through the comment sections and I'm trying to find, you know, exact examples that I could, you know, expound on to see whether or not I'm simping or not, you know? And so I wanted to come in and see. So somebody said last night, you should have posted this six months ago. It's been it's been months since I've seen you pander. I think you were captain saving for Ukraine or some shit. But nine nine out of ten, when cops was un, unaliving black folks on video left and right, you were silent like you are on most black issues. But if it's dealing with other nationalities, you rub up against their leg and curl up into a ball at their feet waiting for a reassuring belly rub like dapper and midnight. So he went, he went off topic and made it about race and how, how in his eyes, I don't really post about race. So this isn't, this isn't involving the simp pander accusations, but, but he's saying I'm pandering to other races or ethnicities or whatever, which is very puzzling to me because I have I have made several posts about racism in America, uh, police brutality, um, history. I've lost thousands of followers speaking on, you know, issues of race. Uh, when the George Floyd stuff was going on, I was I was deep up in the in the in the commentary streets about race in America and what's going on. People were like, man, I just came in for the voiceovers. I didn't come in for this. I'm unfollowing you for this. You know, I go in on Trump and his racist, you know, fan base. Uh, often I lose followers based on that. Um, I, I say things like, you know, I don't believe that people should be colorblind. I feel like you should see everybody's different colors and the different colors in the garden of life makes the garden more beautiful. If everything was the same, that shit would be boring. So, you know, I'm like, clearly you haven't been following me that long. Uh, now, now recently I haven't been going in on racial issues, but that's just super recent. But historically, what is you talking about? Like, and people, people in the comment section was, was, was providing the, the answers that I was going to provide. And so, I, I was just like, okay, where is this coming from? And so, you know, people were saying, uh, you're not really knowing what simp means and, and stuff like that. And uh, Cam, Cam Al C said, Tony is not silent on black issues at all. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he's lost a lot of followers like you over the issue, and they give him a lot of flack for not being silent. Uh, you should really do your research and dig a little bit deeper before you write a paragraph with a false narrative. Um, 
you've somebody else said you've clearly only followed Tony for 1.5 seconds. He talks about injustices against black people all the time, literally. So, yeah, I don't think this was this was accurate at this at this level, you know. Um, so we push forward. We find other examples. Let's see. Uh, Big bro, they only call you a simp and a panderer because you respect women and speak up for them. That's it. Oh, shoot. Let me see if somebody responds to that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, no. I'm trying to find. This is weird. I don't see anyone. You are not. This is that in the third and the fifth. There was another one I wanted to address. Hold on. Hold on. And I also wanted the men to say I'm a simp. I wanted them to provide a brief history on their their relationships with women. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's one. On issues dealing with relationships, you do side with females more often, which is cool, but when it when it becomes too lopsided, you start to sound like a cheerleader for female sensibilities. I'm 33, currently in a two-year relationship, four long relationships through my life. Father, I'm open for discussion on any topic. Okay. So somebody asked him for specific examples. He says, there's plenty of times he touches on relationship topics on his videos. Most times he said things uh, like, fellas, what y'all slash we need to do is, et cetera. Very rarely is there a ladies y'all need to do this, et cetera. That makes, uh, that makes gums seem like a white knight. Call me gums or simp. Trust me, I'm a red pill, man. Very knowledgeable of these dynamics, man. Uh, so... My whole thing is, first of all, first of all, to address the first part of that, it's not really my place to say, ladies, what y'all need to do is this, because I am not a woman. I'm not a lady. Uh, so their experiences are going to be different than mine. Their, their whole physiology is different. Their whole their mindsets, the way they move, the way they walk, the way they think. We all know that men and men and women are different. So it's not really my place to be like, women, y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that. Y'all need to do this. Yes, I can chime in and give my opinion um, on occasion, but I can't, I can't, I can't lay in that and talk about that all the time because I'm not a woman, even though I I've, I've, was raised by a woman, you know, I've, I've been in relationships with women for long periods of time. I know women. I don't know everything about women like that to comfortably be like, ladies, y'all need to do this as a whole. That's just not, this is not how I rock. Now, since I am a man, I have a better perspective on being a man. I just have a better perspective because one, I am one. Two, I talk to men off, off the record, off camera, behind the scenes. And three, it's just, I am one of you. So I'm telling you like, yo, we need to be doing this as men, as one of you, I'm speaking on our behalf, right? And that, 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 that's just common sense though. That's like, you know, as black people, we speak on the black experience. We speak on being black. Yo, black folks, we need to be doing this. I can't say, hey, yo, Asian folks, we need to be doing this. I'm, I'm not Asian. So who am I to be like, yo, Asians, y'all need to do this. Like who... How can I how can I have really good ground on that? You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't even feel comfortable speaking on their behalf or telling them what they should do, right? So that's the that's the vibe that I come with, you know, when it comes to women. Now, now, if you ask me, if you ask me like, yo, Tony, what's your what's your opinion or outlook on women in this regard or that regard? I can give you my opinion and be like, well, it seems like y'all be and I can, you know, highlight certain traits that y'all have. Like I know that. You know, women do certain things. Women think a certain way. Y'all have certain patterns that I can't highlight. But for me to be like, y'all need to be doing this. 
I'd rather throw men on the grill because I am men. And I know how y'all rock. I know how y'all be moving. I know what you say off camera. When the when the women aren't around, I get the inside scoop on men. And they get the inside scoop on me. Because a lot of times we sugarcoat or we edit when we're around certain demographics as to not turn off or not be offensive. You know, we got our filters up. A lot of men have their filters up when it comes to women. Like when it comes to talking about women, when it comes to talking about sex, all of that stuff, we filter up. And women probably do the same. They don't want to turn women off. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to offend. They don't want to look rapey. They don't want to look. There's all kind of elements at play to make people filter up. And women do the same thing. I don't want to look like a hoe. I don't want to look like this, this, that, and the third. So they talk differently and show different sides of themselves when the other group is in the building or in the conversation. So therefore, it's just like, oh, okay. So yeah, I do be throwing men on the grill because I have more insight into the man mindset. You know, and I don't be agreeing with with all the men, as you can see. That's why they get mad and call me a simp. But there's there's no real evidence of simpy behavior. You know what I mean? Y'all don't see me getting played by women. Y'all don't see me, you know, flying women out just to get to look like an, a dummy. Y'all don't see. I don't have a track record of that, of the simpy behavior. Y'all don't see women openly just disrespecting the shit out of me and me just taking it. Just because they women, y'all don't see that. That's that's a simp. A simp is somebody with no self-respect. You know what I mean? They just out here like, yeah, you know, whatever you say, girl, and I believe everything you say, and you can do whatever, and I'm a I'm a wine and dine you regardless, and you know, I'm getting disrespected at the same time, and it's just like whatever you say is right. That's not me. You know what I mean? And so that's a simp. We're just like, man, we hey man. You know what I'm saying? Have some respect for yourself. Like that when you when you got to when you got to say that, that's somebody doing some simpy shit. You know what I mean? And I guess the girl version of that is a pick me. But a lot of times y'all be calling somebody a pick me just because they they boosting up men. See, that's the thing. Y'all be like, "Oh, you a simp if you boost up women, you a pick me if you boost up men." Why can't why can't we cheerlead for the other team? You know what I'm saying? When we have good relationships and good outlooks on the other teams. You know what I mean? Like, I have great relationships with women. I always have in terms of just like, women are nice to me. And always have been. Even even back in the day when we were younger and like kids was heartless and we were ripping each other to shreds in school. We teasing people. We clowning you for the clothes you wear. We clowning you for every goddamn thing because we haven't found ourselves. We're insecure. We're scared. And so as 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 youth, we go to school with this armor up. We leaving our hearts on the dresser. We go to school heartless and we rip each other to shreds based on fear insecurity and just like we haven't even found ourselves so we just lash out at other students right but then as you grow as you become an adult you're supposed to leave all that shit behind but some people are still stuck in that and so all right so you know a girl was mean to you girls were mean to me when i was growing up they was mean to me you know they, you fat tony you chubby lose some weight they was on my neck they hurt my feelings you know what I mean? They went for the they went for the slim guy. They went for the athlete. They went for the guy with the car. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I was taking L's out here. I was taking L's. I was putting my heart on the line, taking the smooth L, L. Ron Hubbard. But but overall, when I look back, when I truly reflect, I'm like, yo, women have been nice to me my whole life. Even in the midst of girls, me p focusing on the wrong girls and getting my heart hurt, there was always a girl somewhere else being nice to me. There was always my mom being nice to me. There was always my aunts being nice to me. There was always like women in my life, teachers, whatever, that was giving me good energy the whole time. But you know, a lot of people, they can't shake the, neg the negative aspects. 
They want to hold on to the negativity, bypassing the good things, bypassing the people that were good to you, bypassing the people that were breathing life into you, bypassing, uh, you know, women that are giving you the jewels and the nuggets to be a, a better person. You bypassing all that. You focus on the girl that broke your heart because she got with this dude. You like, well, women ain't shit. Mind you, your mom is holding you down. Your aunt is holding you down. You know, your teacher is holding you down. That girl, that, that girl that likes you for you. But you don't like her, but she likes you for you. She's still, she's still giving you positivity. You're like, no, nah, man, fuck that. This. And women do the same thing. Women do the same thing. When they start, when they start getting bitter at men, they like, oh, men are trash. What about this dude? Oh, you know, he's an exception, but this dude. So we focus on that negative. But what I've done and what I do, I just think about like, man, I know a lot of dope women. I know a lot of just dope women and like women when i think back and reflect and when i weigh it out when i do the ratio when i do the balance there are a lot more women that have been nice to me than mean to me throughout my life and so with that when you have a group of people or individuals that are extremely good to you you would look like a crazy person if you sat up here and tore them down after all, all that good treatment, you're going to sit here and tear down women after they've been good to you? What does that look like? What? Who are you? These people out here being good to you and you tearing them down, you be like, man, you crazy. You wild. And so I'm fully aware that women have held me down my whole life. You know what I'm saying? They, they've been nice to me. They've complimented me. They supported me. They held me up. They educated me. They taught me valuable lessons. You know, I've been married. I've been in long-term relationships. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you give yourself to a woman, when you open your heart to a woman, when you hope, open your mind to her, y'all are connecting, y'all are building, you're building trust, you in there. You know what I mean? Y'all become partners. Y'all become companions. It's like... Of course, I'm going to be nice to women. Of course, I'm going to cheerlead for them and, and boost them up and give them support. Who the, Why wouldn't I? It doesn't mean I'm getting run over. It doesn't mean I'm getting disrespected. It doesn't mean I'm putting up with disrespect. It doesn't mean I'm blowing my money on women. It just means that I like y'all. I'm not saying stuff just to butter y'all up, just to get the panties off. That's corny. Like, And there's been plenty of times where... You know, I just be like, you know, I like this. I'm not feeling this. And a lot of women disagree with me. Women disagree with me all the time. When they find out I don't like talking on the phone, they try to push back and be like, I'm calling you. Or you got to call me. I'm like, no, I don't. I ain't got to call nobody. You're not going to force me into phone calls. You're just not going to. People just can't force me to do shit, male or female. If I don't want to do it, guess what? Guess what? You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I stand firm in my stances. And a lot, some women, sometimes women ain't going to agree. And I'm just like, all right, well, that's how I feel. And, you know, women that have dealt with me in a romantic sense, they know. They know. You know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of y'all just get one side of me, but you know, women that have been intimate with me in those spaces, they see a different side. They might see an extra ultra buttery side, and they also see like a side that's not having it. So, you know, the simp card, I'm just like, where y'all seeing this at? Now, you know, some cats say just because you be sticking up for women, you be believing them when they say anything. You just believe whatever they say. Here's why I do that. Like the, the lady that got hit with a brick or whatever. Let's talk about that. For me, from being around women, hold on. From being around women, talking to women, knowing women, a lot of a lot of women are victimized, like truly victimized in some way. And you know, I, I 
there are so many women that I know personally that have been done wrong, whether it's a uh, whether it's uh, sexual harassment, assault, and they haven't even there were no charges brought up. They just they just ate it. Didn't say anything. They just they just took it, whether it be from childhood, whether it be from adulthood, whether when they were a teen, you know. I bet you if you really talk to women, many cases, it might even be more so than not. They have gone through something, you know, at the hands of a man. And, you know, when they do, when they do come out and they talk about, you know, being assaulted by a man, being harassed by a man, anything, I would rather be on the side of believing you until I am proven wrong than vice versa. I would rather be on your side than to sit up here and, and call you a liar off the rip. What do I have to lose? It, it's just compassion. It's compa I would rather be on the right side of what you went through than to be on the other side like, nah, man, you lying. And then I got to come hat in hand with an apology. Like if you, if and women do, women do lie. They do lie on men. It happens all the time. They fabricate. It happens all the time. But you know what else happens even more? True shit. True violations happen more so than not. I guarantee you this. I will, I will wager my left nutsack on this that women are truly getting victimized here. Like for real. Than the ones that cry wolf. Yeah, there's some shady women out here lying on men for sure. But you can't let that be the majority of, of, of what's going on out here. A lot of women that have been victimized won't even say anything publicly. They won't ever say it. They'll go to the grave with these secrets. They'll tell somebody in, in confidence. But that just goes to show you, man, you really ain't going to say nothing. Nah, I'd rather just not even say it. And so, and they living with that and they holding it by themselves because they know if they do come out in public, it's going to be a whole shitload of people like you lying. You shouldn't have wore that dress. You shouldn't have did this. What was you doing to even earn this? It's like, they're going to blame that woman. And so a lot of women don't even want to deal with it. So me, I would rather be on the side of, damn, compassion. Not necessarily that I believe you 100% right out the gate, but I would rather come with the compassion and support out the gate. And if you align, if you play me, I lose nothing. Call me gullible. I, I'd rather be gullible than somebody to just not believe in a real victim because that, that's just horrible. I don't want to hold that. I don't want to carry that weight of, I, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I thought you was lying. I don't want to come back around the corner hat in hand. And then you was like, man, you didn't believe me. You didn't trust me, man. You you made it harder for me. I would rather make it easier for you. I would rather be like, you know what? I believe you. And then when you come out and you were lying, I was just like, you know what? You got me. But my heart was pure. My intentions were pure. I would rather have pure intentions. Because what, cause what are you going to get out of not believing somebody? You going to I told you so. I told you so. That Okay. You told us so. You was right in this case. Good for you. You want some crackers? You want some cookies? You want a parade? You want a bonus? You want a direct deposit lump sum of cash because you told us so? You want to be hoisted in the crowd like Rudy and, or some shit like that? Just because you told us so? Just because you wasn't fooled? You want you want some prizes? You want, you want a, a jar of pickles? Deal? Good for you. Well, what about the times you didn't believe somebody and they was dead on? And I'd rather, I'd rather just err on the side of compassion. That's, that's just how I roll. But some people can see that as pandery, simpy behavior. Tony, Tony ain't throwing women on the grill enough. Aren't they already thrown on the grill enough? I ain't got the, I ain't got the do shit. And I ain't got to add to the grill. Women are always on the grill. Why do I need to add to it? Maybe maybe I want to offer an alternative. You know what I'm saying? Women getting grilled up every day. They getting grilled up by men and women and in between. Why do I need to add that? Especially black women. Black women ultra grilled up. 
No, Tony pandering again. He said women be having it hard. Men be having it hard, too. Men be having it hard, too. Men do be having it hard. Black men be having it hard, too. But I feel like women have it worse. Women have it worse. That's just what I believe. That's just how I feel. Women have it worse. Yes, men, we have our struggles. We go through our shit. But I feel like women have it worse. We got wage gaps. We got sexual assault gaps. We got women truly getting victimized for their bodies. Sex trafficking. You know what I mean? Torn down for your wardrobe. How you dress. How you look. How's your hair looking. They dealing with a lot of extra shit that men ain't getting thrown on the grill for. You know what I'm saying? So, so my mindset is I don't want to add to all of that all the time. Yeah, I'm going to have a bone to pick with women every now and then, and I'm going to say my piece. I'm going to be like, women, y'all be getting on my nerves with this. And then we can have a back and forth. And then if I'm in the wrong, a woman's going to throw me on the grill. If I agree, but like, you know what? I'm wrong. I apologize. If I don't, I'm not going I'm not going to give you a fake apology. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, women have it hard. And that's not to say that men don't, but I just be looking like, damn, man. Y'all be going through it. And I'm just compassionate about that. That that's not to say I don't, I don't feel like, you know, men are not getting their just due, but it's just I just don't want to add to that. You know what I mean? So let me see. Let me see what else was said up in here. Somebody said, people pleasing. Tony, they must be new. <laughs> I, I'm definitely, definitely not a people pleaser. I've come to find out. Um, almost to the point where I feel like I'm selfish. Um. Yeah, that's one. That's one thing I can't say that I am, and I feel like if you're if you're truly pandering, that's part of the people pleasing category right there. I feel like that's not really my brand. And when they brought up me, when I when I when I got in on the stop Asian hate, I meant that. I meant every word of that. When when the Asian people were getting assaulted, remember they were getting just attacked randomly. I meant every word of that. Stop Asian hate, man. If you out here hating Asian people, just attacking them, stop that shit. I meant that. That doesn't mean, oh, I don't care about the black struggle and what's going on with black folks. Like, who said that? I meant every word of that. I was just like, yeah, I said it with my whole chest, shirt off. My pants was off, too, when I said it. Stop Asian hate. That in no way means, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about black folks. I'm not going to speak up on black folks' behalf. Where y'all get that from? Just let me care about let me care about other people other than my own. I can do that as well. I can multitask on compassion and love and support. I'm very good at multitasking. You know what I'm saying? I can have compassion for the Asian community, the gay community, the Russian community, the Ukrainian community, and also care about the black community. I can multitask with this compassion, Shorty. I ain't got to be like, no, oh, I'm just over here. I'm just going to worry about black folks, and that's it. That's all, the compa- that's all the compassion I got to give. Oh, all right, with your rations of, of compassion. But that's not me. I got a lot of compassion up in there, man. I have an abundance of compassion over here, man. I got compassion for men and women. You know what I'm saying? Hispanic, black, Asian, white. I got compassion, y'all. I'm out here with the compassion, man. It's an endless reserve. You know what I'm saying? The compassion is deep in here. It's thick. I got thick compassion up in here, man. So a lot of people just want you one way. They just want you to be like, nah, man, you can't have compassion for no other group, man. Just focus on this. I'll be like, man, don't tell me what to do. First of all, that's how you lose me. That's how you lose me. Trying to tell me what to do, trying to tell me what to post, trying to tell me what to say. That's how you fuck up. Because I'm going to be petty and just be like, you know what? Give me the clan robe. I'm going to wear the clan robe all week. 
I'm going to support the white supremacists because you told me not to, man. Fuck you. This, this, is, this is petty tone. You're not going to tell me what to do. Somebody told me to take my post down when I posted a verbal cardio clip about people getting up too much on the airplane. And somebody was like, I got kidney problems. This, this, that, and the third. Take this post down. I ain't taking shit down. I got I got compassion for your kidney issues, but I said what I said. Sit the fuck down, man. Everybody that's moving around on these flights ain't got kidney issues. Sit your ass down. I ain't taking the post down. Now I'm going to pin the post. I'm going to pin it to the top. Talking about take this post down. Fuck you, man. Nah, I ain't taking shit down. Till I'm ready to take it down. That's me. And I meant what I said, man. Sit your ass down on these flights. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? All right, let's see what we talking about in here. We got any? Somebody say, honestly, dog, getting called a simp these days just means you actually like and respect women. It's actually a compliment now. Um, let's see here. I didn't. I didn't find a lot of examples, especially when I asked for specific examples. They wouldn't give me a lot. Let's see. They don't have nothing to stand on. Yeah, it's like they just know what it what it they think it is when you throw it out there, right? Because I get hit with that shit all the time <laughs> on Twitter. I just be like, man, shut the hell up. Because <laughs> it's like in in real life, it's just it's like crazy. Like I'm doing this to try to garner the attention of women, right? That's what they. That's what like they that's think. what it thinks. Like yeah. because that's how that's how they brought up. If you do something nice for someone, then you're trying to get their attention, or you right. want them to do something like that. Mm-hmm. That's an entitlement mindset. But a lot of young boys grow up having that entitlement mindset. Right. So that bleeds into when you get older, where how you look for uh, attention or how you think you want to get certain things. So you see somebody else doing it, you just be thinking, man, you trying to you trying to jump down on these women. You trying to do all right. this kind of stuff like that, like having actual care. And compassion for them, seeing them as a human makes me makes you think that I am trying to right. like get at them or gain their, you know, something like that. And I'm yeah. like, that's not my motive. Right. And then like for for you to be somebody that they consider to be pandering, you have to have an ulterior motive. That's literally what the definition means. Yeah. So what would your motive be in this case? If you're already somebody as big as you are, have statue of status, you're right. gonna get women regardless. Right. So why the hell do I have to pander if I there's dudes out here that do the worst. Don't have to pander for shit and still get women. So what is right. the motive? Like, really? When you and really then, break it down. They was calling me a panderer, too, when I was in a relationship. He said, like, man, you just pandering. I'm like, I'm in a relationship. <laughs> I'm not trying to get the panties from these women. You know what I mean? And so I feel like I feel like as men that are attracted to women, that have relationships with women, they are your companions. How can you not be more sympathetic and nicer to women. They don't actually like the woman. And that's the thing. Like, point blank. It's not like, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that your your sexuality is in question. Right. I'm saying- They don't like women. Like, yeah, literally. Like, you don't like them as people. Right. Like, you don't look at them as people. You I've just seen look so at many them as things. sex objects and that's it. Yeah. Like, you, like, you, like when they speak, it's like, ah, oh, you've ruined it. You, you're talking. Yeah. It's like, you don't like what they have to say. Like, they're going to have voice. They're going to have opinions. Like, what mm-hmm. do you mean? Like, don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. No, right. I mean, just- I want to just objectify you. Let me just look at you and yeah. just leave it at that. I want to do this to you. I want to do like do things too. That's another right. way of looking at it. like how you want to do this. I did this to them. We didn't do it together. It was something I did. Like you're not yeah. looking at it equally. That's an object at that point. Yeah. And that's all I, I, I detailed my car. Yeah. I put air in my tires. That, that's what you do to inanimate objects. Yeah. I cut my grass. I did this to this. I, I changed my whole my whole living room. Yeah. But there's n- there's none of that. And it's a lot of dudes like that. And they don't so-called get it. ladies men. Yeah. And that don't mean you are like a bad dude. It's just like how you look at it. Yeah. Like you really gotta take a step back and just look at how you actually look at people. Right. Especially women. Like, how are you actually looking at this person? Is there a level of humanity there? Or is it just because of the things that they do for you or what they can do to stroke your ego or how to look at right. it. Right. That was something I learned a while ago with like relationships. It's like, how am I looking at this? How do I explain to somebody how great my girlfriend is mm. without saying the things that they do for me? Right. Do I know them? 
Or am I just saying the things that they do for me because I like that? That makes me feel good. Right. But how can I explain this to somebody else that's not getting that same treatment? Mm -hmm. You got to actually know them. Right. And the way to get to know them is you got to look at them like they're your equal, like y'all humans. Right. You got to look at them and understand them. And rather than it being like, I only even care because I'm attracted to this. Right. Like, that's crazy. Because they can only look at certain people through the prism of what you're doing for me. The compliments you give me, the sex you give me, the whatever you give me. They're not looking at the people as individuals. They're looking at, all right, what can you do for me? Or like, you know, I'm doing this for you. So I want this in return. And women do it too. Women yeah. do it to men too. Like it's like, you know, because I've had situations where I sometimes I don't feel genuinely valued as just a person more so than just, you know, I like you. So I want you to do this, this, that, and the third. And since I did this, how can you not do that? So I'm just like, you're not really valuing me as just me. Yeah, it's transactional. It's transactional. Yeah. So it's like and a lot of relationships are very transactional. Yeah. Tit for tat. I yep. did this. You should do this. Yep. It's very, you know, structured in that way. And that's just not how it rocks. Right. You just on Rocky Road the whole time you're doing something like that. Mm -hmm. It's not actually true. We've seen that too many times where people are in a relationship just because right. they don't really actually like each other. And you could tell. Oh, when you, yeah. You when you man. actually fall in love with somebody and then you be like, Dang, those other guys, man, they were they were just they yeah, were just faking it. For sure. For what it was. You can smell it. You'd be like, oh, this is just they just in it. Yeah. They just in it just cause. Yeah, man. It's it's tough though. I mean, I, I see it all the time. It's getting into that that territory where, you know, it's gonna take more people like you and I that are gonna have to teach the younger boys like, y'all can't do that, man. Cause yeah. the internet is is telling them the complete opposite. Right. It's telling them to go crazy and do all that stuff like that. But I'm trying to tell these dudes, like, you teenagers and stuff like that, man, you can't be acting like this. You're right. going to die alone. And that's, like, that's reality. And yeah. I'm not saying that to try to, like, it is a point of fear, but at the same time, it's just, like, that's what it is. I don't think people get that. Mm. When I say that, I don't mean that you will have, like, like nobody. But right. people want to be with somebody, and it's a nice to have somebody around, no matter who that person may right. be. You making choices that alienate you because... You're not a nice person to be around. Right. That's what you're becoming now. That red pill, that incel stuff, you're becoming a terrible person so early. Mm. And when you get older, people have already made their choices and picked out the people that they like. And right. you won't be chose because you think that you're just the pick of it. I, you know, there's so many women to go around. They could be scared to look, man. I don't know if you notice. Know women picking, they're choosing right. now. They have a choice and they're not choosing y'all. <laughs> and that's on purpose. That's on purpose. <laughs> It's not right. an accident. They are literally it's going out of the way. It's like, it's intentional. Yeah. I don't care to be married out. Women will go and be single. They getting their degrees. They getting their money up. Right. And y'all out here, man, I don't care about no, no, no. And you hitting, getting closer to, I'm about to turn 30 and people getting older than that or whatever and talking, I don't care about none of that. Okay. All right. Let's run this back about 10 years from now and see what happens. It's going to be because of the things that you said today that right. affect how you how it goes down in the future because yeah. women are wising it up they're not this is not the 50s this is not the 20s they <laughs> right. have choices they have options they have rights and they will opt out too they be like yo I'm, I'm gonna just opt out and be fine by myself I ain't gonna literally. I ain't gonna put up for this and settle I'm like alright respect literally and what does that red pill mean somebody mentioned that in the comments I'm not sure where it came from but that's like I know the it's whole a matrix like, reference but like what, yeah. what does each pill represent I don't think there is a other side of it at least in this mm. context uh -huh. i just know that like red pills like you're being fed this information to okay kind of radicalize you in a way so the red pill is so if you take the red pill you're being fed what's real or what's fake i don't even say it's fake it's more like a like it's just very aggressive i would say okay it's like a like aggressive way of getting information Cause and I can't remember in the movie like which which pill represented which which uh which direction. Oh, uh, red pill. Glenn says red pill means you wake up. Hmm. Red pill is waking up. Okay. So so in the movie, Morpheus. I mean, uh, Neo took the red pill, and so if he took the blue pill, he would have woke up back in 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 the Matrix. Like overly alpha mentality. Okay. Blue is it you stay in the dream. Okay. All hmm. right. Because I couldn't remember the exact difference in the two pills. So I feel like in this instance, I don't think that's waking up though. 
Yeah, like what are you waking that, up that's to? That's not waking. That's not waking up. And I think that's how they dress it. So that might be why they call it red pill because they do address it as like, no, these dudes they wisening up. And to me, I'm like, y'all are actually doing the opposite, right? Because it's not you're not actually living in this reality. You're you're completely alienating yourself because you're trying to pick out specific parts of what the reality is and completely missing the part where you're going to be held accountable for the things that you do right. and what you say. Yeah, because it's like, what are, what are they waking up from? Like, what are, you, what are you discovering? The whole thing is like, man, women be blah, 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 this and that, and da-da-da, coming to the truth of their ulterior motives and blah, 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 and all this stuff like that. And it's like, this is reality, and you're looking at it like super one-sided because you feel jaded for the things that people try to hold men accountable for. Right. And it's going to always be skewed a little bit more towards men because we live in a patriarchal society. Right. That's just generally what it is. Right. And the things that y'all want everybody else to care about, y'all got to care about it too. You can't mm-hmm. talk about men's mental health and all the stuff like that if you dudes don't care about that shit at all. Right. You go clown your boy because he want to do such and such. He's going to <laughs> therapy and he want to do some yoga or something. Man, what are you all right. doing that shit? Right. Y'all got to, it, it takes the same people who are trying to point fingers to actually give a fuck first. Right. And then everybody else will jump in because- I don't even know how a lot of dudes can blame women for the way things are, the shape and stuff like that. When they, when we know in the black community, especially the women are the ones that are raising these kids. Right. And then you're going to go back when you get older and be like, man, women ain't shit. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> I could never, I had both my parents. I can never be like, man, my mom, nothing. Like, right. that's crazy. My grandparents, my aunts, my moms, my like, what? Yeah. My, I'm telling you, man. That, and, that, and that's what I've been getting at. It's like, yo, how can you be around all these women growing up and- Look at not now. Now I know there's certain there are certain instances, probably less than more, where you know they they probably did get fucked up by women, like treated harshly, abused, whatever. I'm not saying that those instances instances don't exist, but it's like for the most part, though, it's like how can you be around all these good women and, and then still come out on the other side like women ain't shit? I'm just like. What should I'll be wanting to know the origin story of each individual that has that mindset? Yeah, you gotta take like, it to therapy, bro. Like, it, yeah. it, at some point, you gotta you gotta go there. I get yeah. it. You could get your heart broken when you were in For high sure. school. And it could have been a relationship school. with your mom. That that's crucial. Like, yeah. you, you know, if your mom is fucked up, that could that could yeah, that's a game changer. Yeah, and that's just that's just generational. Yeah, that's at that point, it's like damn. You know what I'm saying? So I I, I could understand like why you had that mindset, but. There had to be some good women in there somewhere. Yeah. And it and the thing is, like, a lot of the guys that will spew that will say, like, women ain't shit. Yeah. Don't really say much about guys, though, for sure. Yeah. I feel like every dude know a guy that be on some shit. Absolutely. Every dude know a dude that be, he be on some shit. 100%. Or has done some shit. And he, he man, you know, he he getting his life together. He this and that. There's a second chance for that. Don't let a woman fuck up. That's it. That's Right, game. that's it. That's a wrap. That's, it's done. Ain't no second chances for the women. Ain't no second chances, ladies. They grow up being like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't care about this or nothing like that. And then what's the, you know, the, every dude's favorite line, I ain't, I wasn't really tripping on women like that. I ain't get the value. Then I had a daughter. Why it even, <laughs> you still don't get it. Yeah. Like, I had a daughter, man. And, I, you know, that's when I woke it up. You know, I was da-da-da. Like, man, get out of here with that Once shit. Once I had a daughter, man, everything changed. Really, I, I started to that. really understand. It's like, nah, now you got to be a protective and try to keep the fuck boys that you was growing up to be like away right. from this person. And yep. I'm, I'm gonna pray for that daughter, bro. Cause, man, dudes, man, this is why. And I'll be on y'all because I'm one of y'all. So I expect more. Just want y'all to be better. That's it. Yeah, man. That's it. that's all it is, man. I'm over here like just like women be on women's heads sometimes. Like, bitch, get your shit together. You know, that's how I be talking to y'all, man. And I'm not gonna spoon feed or sugarcoat for y'all. I'm harsh. I'm very matter of fact. I'm blunt. And I'm not about to baby no dudes, especially grown men. Y'all know better. Do better. And I, you know, I hold y'all, I hold y'all to a high standard, man. Get your shit together, man. Get it in gear. All right, let me do some this or that it's real quick. You know what I'm saying? Jarrell Thomas, Michael Bay's Lethal Weapon or James James Cameron's Jurassic Park? I'm gonna go James Cameron's Jurassic Park. Uh Michael Bay, he. Even though I love Bad Boys 1 and 2, um, sometimes he could be a bit much. He could be a bit much. And Michael Bay has a lot of films that... Michael Bay has a lot of films that I'm just like, all right, you did too much. James Cameron, 
I can't think of a I can't think of a James Cameron directed film that I did not like. James Cameron is undefeated, so I'm gonna definitely go. I'm gonna definitely go James Cameron's Jurassic Park. I want to see his take on Jurassic Park. So you know, when I think about James Cameron's filmography, Terminator. I didn't see Piranha. That was his first movie, but you know, come on, this is his first movie. This is his first movie, man. Come on. So he did. He did Terminator. He did Aliens. He did The Abyss. He did um, Terminator 2. He did True Lies. He did Titanic. He did Avatar. He did Avatar 2. That track record right there, man. Every movie, every movie that I just listed off, I liked. Michael Bay, Pearl Harbor was sloppy. Uh, Armageddon was cool, but it was a little bit, you know, ridiculous. Um, the Island was, it was forgettable. The first Transformers was fun. The rest of the Transformers that he directed, it was a complete mess. Um, that, that movie about the soldiers overseas, though, that was a good one. Pain and Gain was good. But I'm going to just go with James Cameron. James Cameron just has a better track record. Um, uh, T. Yumika Lee asks, the Kendrick and Drake uh, battle needs to stop now. Listeners, et cetera, are taking this to a deadly level. Uh, the question is, can comedians come together to help this situation? Uh... I don't know. It's not a it's not a comedian fight. You know what I'm saying? And especially who are we to say anything? Especially how we started the year off with the Cat Williams thing, and there was a lot there's, there's a lot of division in comedy. So I don't know if we are the ones to to come in and make it better. You know what I'm saying? Because as you can see, we got our own issues in house. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, we're gonna make fun of everything. We're gonna chime in, we're gonna give commentary, we're gonna be doing our thing. But, you know, as far as us making it better, exactly, uh, Alex Charlie, we could, we could make it worse. You know, because when, when we start cracking the jokes and choosing sides and pointing stuff out, they'd be like, man, I didn't even think about it that way. We could actually make it worse. So, Tanisha Turner asks, question, if you can street fight any celebrity and if you win, you can keep the money and all assets, who would it be? I would like to fight... Donald Trump. I would like to fight him. He's a celebrity. Let me fight him. He looks slow. He's fat. Let me let me get in on that fight. Let me get in on that Donald Trump fade. Let me sock him out. Let me knock his hairpiece loose. I'm taking that fight all day. I want him to be in the suit with a red tie. I want to take his ass down. Just sock him on out, man. Piece him up. Fist of cuffs. Paps. All that. Let me get Donald Trump, man. I just want to. It's just his face, man. Let me sock it up, man. Let me sock it up. Let me pap it out. Come on, man. Sock you out in that little suit you got on, man. I'm all in. Donald Trump is my celebrity pick, Tanisha Turner. Uh, Nikola asks, this or that, in Mexico with the runs again or being booed at Madison Square Garden? Give me Mexico doo-dooing on myself. Give me Mexico taking a dump on myself in the four seasons once again. I will gladly shit on myself again. I will Being booed at Madison Square Garden? No, I could never live that down. I can live down doodling on myself. I've already lived it down. You know what I'm saying? Me being booed at Madison Square Garden, that, that would haunt me forever. Even though doodling on myself haunts me, and it was tough, and it was, but it was like, you know, what can you do, man? It was... That was out of my control. It wasn't my fault. And I, I tell myself that every morning. When I look in the mirror and I'll be like, Tony, when you do it on yourself, it's not your fault. It's like goodwill hunting. And he was like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Remember, he was just pressing. He was pressing Matt Damon. He's like, it's not your fault. all up in his grill piece 
that's what I tell myself every morning. You know what I'm saying? That what happened in Mexico was not my fault. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. That's an easy answer. Great question, though. Uh, this or that. Blue Can Trail or Faith Evans? I'm going Faith Bartholomew Evans. She just got a, uh, a better catalog. Are we talking looks or are we talking music? If we talking looks, it's a different conversation. If we talking just as just as just as singers, I'm gonna go with Faith Evans. Faith Evans, okay. Trey Porter asks, "What are your top five years for movies that you'd want to relive again?" Oh man, that's a tough question right there. 1987. Uh. 1987 was the year where I was like, I think that was when I was fully just like movies, 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 movies. That's when I was like paying attention to the ratings they were getting from critics. That's when I was paying attention to how long it was in theaters. That's when I was trying to get my mind together on like how much, how much money movies were making, what's considered a hit. That's when I really started like studying the movie section of the, of the paper and I was just like, that was the year the Lost Boys came out and RoboCop and like all these movies came by me love and like, you know, all these different movies coming out. And I was just like, that's when I was really just taking in, you know, movies and like what's going on. That's when I really started to laser focus on it. So I'm going to go with 87. 91 was a dreadful year in terms of grosses. It was like a slump. It was like, it was a slump money wise. So I'm going to go 1994. That was, movies was cracking. That was a Shawshank Redemption. That was Pulp Fiction. That was, uh, that was the Lion King. That was Speed. That was, uh, you know, all these movies were coming out in like 94. So I'm going to go 94. I'm going to go, um, I will go. Whew. I don't know why I'm, I'm leaning towards like 1998. That was the year Blade came out, and like, uh, hmm, I want to do 98. Because once Blade came out, that kind of shifted. 1998 shifted the needle with the, with the release of Blade. Rush Hour came out in 98. Um, another another year, 1989. That was the year of Batman, Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Lethal Weapon 2, Ghostbusters 2. I'm going to throw 89 in there. So we got, so we got 87, 89, 94. 1999 was fire. That was the sixth sense. Um, hmm. Two thousand, the X Men came out. Two thousand two, Spider Man came out. That was a game changer. Let me go two thousand two because Spider once Spider Man hit the scene, it was like yo, comic book movies for show, sure, man. We got to dig into this. And then, uh, shoot, I'm gonna go nineteen eighty five, Back to the Future. 1985 so we got 85 87 89 94 and 2002 those are gonna be my picks you know what i'm talking about you feel me great question though uh kelvin davis asked do you think the kendrick versus drake beef is getting out of hand now it's getting it's messy it's messy so i don't, I don't want it to get even messier than this so i think right now is a good place to stop um, let's see here. Let's see here. Oops. Marquise LaRue asks, this or that, be able to drink whatever you want with no ill health effects or be able to eat whatever you want with no ill health effects. Let me eat whatever I want, Shorty. I've been dreaming about this for centuries, man. Let me eat whatever I want. 
Please let me let me have this. Let me do it. Let me eat whatever. And it means because drinking, I really enjoy just drinking water. Water is all I want to drink, is all I care about. I'll drink other stuff, sure. But if I just if I just drink water for the rest of my life and drink nothing else, I'm fine. I'm like, I won't even flinch. I I rarely have cravings for like a specific drink. Like it's rare that I crave like apple juice or orange juice or juices or Kool-Aid or like it's rare that I crave any of those things. I'll be like, yeah, I want some water. But the food though? Oh yeah. The food, if I could just be out here eating fried foods all day, greasy spoon stuff and just biscuits and butters and cakes and pies and just no no ill side effect no diabetes no nothing no high blood pressure no let me eat everything let me eat everything shorty that's an easy answer that's an easy answer damon k stevens asks would you think uh what do you think of the wild outfits on display at the Met Gala? And would you attend if invited? The Met Gala is all about the wild outfits. Like, I was like, what is this gala? Like, what they be doing? What they be doing at galas? I know they be having a theme each, to, each time, but like, what they be doing inside? Like, I just want to go. I just want to go to see what y'all be doing in there. I just want to go in there and be like, oh, this is what y'all been doing? All right, I'm out. So I would probably wear something like, like mad silly. Like how Doja Cat did it. She showed up in the towel. And then she had on a wet, a wet t-shirt. I would do stuff like that. That's what I would do. I would just come with something mad ridiculous. And just be like, yeah, I'm here. No bottoms on. Winnie the Pooh style. Shirt stopping here. I'm bottomless. Uh, you know, just going to the Met Gala. What's the thing? Winnie the Pooh, y'all. Winnie the Pooh. That's what I, that's what I went as. <laughs> it's chilly out here, huh? As you can see. And I go in and I'm just in there, no bottoms on. That's what I'm wearing. So yeah, I would go to be nosy. King Julius D, what would you bring aboard? Uh who would you bring who who would you bring aboard to star in a movie? Gritty cop slasher comedy out of your friends and peeps roles tight ass detective who would i have as the tight ass detective uh the tight ass detective chaz rogers um the partner i'm gonna go with kev on stage the killer or killers um i'm gonna make keon and keenan Two hitmen killers. The beautiful damsel. I'm gonna go with uh the beautiful damsel. Hmm. Oh, let me think. Beautiful damsel. Why am I drawing? I'm going to go with Persephone on the Beautiful Damsel. Uh, the Boyfriend. The Boyfriend. The Boyfriend of who? Who? Julius, who's the, the Boyfriend? The Boyfriend of uh, which character? Oh, the boyfriend of the damsel? I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with Pat. Then uh the parents. Oh, that means I gotta tap into my older circle. The parents. I'm gonna go with my mom and DC's dad. Uh the boss. I'm gonna go with Angel as the boss. The side dude. The side dude to the to the couple. 
side dude, I'm gonna go Chinna Chinna do. The side chick, I'm gonna go uh shoot, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know about side chick. The one quiet guy that know everything, but nobody know why. Uh, I'm going to go with D.C. Irvin. And then Daps and Midnight. So that's, that's why I'm going with that cast. All right. Um, let me get the hell out of here, man. We are hour and 15. We are hour and fifteen in. Um, I gotta I gotta do a questions episode where I really just tackle all the questions from episodes past too, and just go boom 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 rattle off the questions and topics. We also overdue for another paranormal uh, episode. We overdue for another one of those. Um, I want to thank y'all for pulling up. Shout out to my patron saints, aka my production staff. Y'all my production team, man. Y'all are the producers of, of Verbal Cardio at this point. So I just want y'all to know that. I want you to feel it. I want you to hold it. I want you to embrace that. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? Um, so I appreciate y'all. And thank you for the questions and the topics, man. Y'all are vital to the podcast. And what other, what other what other platform is giving you this much creative space? Huh? Is Hulu doing this for you? Is Netflix letting you co-produce some of their product and content? No. I'm bringing it here. You know what I'm talking about? You feel me? So I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, and thank you for tuning in to another session of that verbal cardio.